What's going on everybody? This is the Sanglucci crew. We've got Sanglucci himself and also the Asian Persuasion. We're going to be providing you guys with some really key information today on how to play the Apple Weeklies and how to hopefully not get screwed by the market makers out there. There are a lot of advanced topics in here. We're going to try to dumb it down as much as we can. We're going to give it to you in twofold here, all right? We're going to give it to you from the trader's perspective from Sanglucci and we're going to give it to you from sort of a quant perspective. Uh, from for me, the, the, the quant, the Asian persuasion, obviously. And uh, we're going to talk about pretty much, you know, the whole uh, walkthrough in terms of Apple Weekly. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. All right. So first things first, just to uh, further what Pete was saying, basically, I mean, this is going to, you're going to hear a lot of advanced uh, uh, topics of discussion here when trading these Apple uh, Weeklies. So again, if you guys are beginner traders, basic options traders, um, this webinar will be recorded so you can go back and, uh, and check it out later, you know, when you phoned up on, uh, on a lot of your options trading and you've started to trade yourself, okay? So basically what we want to do is first give you the outlay on Apple options in general and then, and then we want to actually take you through a couple trades that I made today and show you some things that you really have to be aware of when you're actually trading these things, okay? So the first thing we want to do is just take you through an options chain on Apple and just go through the things that we notice that we actually pay attention to and affect what options that we want to play in, uh, you know, whether it's puts or calls, okay? So the first thing you want to notice when you're trading Apple is, number one, the, uh, the options are very expensive. Now, remember, these are weekly options. So first thing, let's talk about the expirations, okay? So now Apple has weekly options. It's one of the stocks that does issue weekly options. But there's one other caveat here is that, they issue weeklies in advance, guys. They issue these weeklies in advance now on stocks like Apple, on stocks like the Spy, on stocks like Bank of America, and there's a couple others as well. Now, the SIBO just started to do this, obviously because they want to rate more commissions on you, and they see how much volume these things are trading every single day, okay? Apple weeklies, okay? If you're looking at the call side or the put side, they trade as much as the Spy now, guys. They trade as much as Bank of America, they trade as much as all these large cap stocks. So there's so much gaming going on in these Apple options, and that's why they're so hot. This is just the new hottest thing to trade on the street. So the SIBO recognized this and said, you know what, screw it. We're going we're gonna to issue weeklies now for six weeks in advance. So the weeklies are already open for December 28th. They're already open for January 4th. They're already open for January 11th. And then you've got the monthlies, with, which expire on January 18th. So as you can see, if you're looking at your options chain, you see the December weeklies, you see the January first week, you see the January second week, and then you go ahead and see the monthlies, okay? So they issued all this shit in advance, all right? And, and, and that is simply, simply to rape you guys on the commissions and give you guys supposedly more options uh, uh, to play and more strategies to use uh, for whatever it is that you want to accomplish here in your trading, okay? So... Um, so just to go back, now, now you see how expensive these things are. Okay, so now let's look at something that's close to the money. So right now the stock closed at around 530. All right, so now let's take a look at the 530 call and see how much it's going for. It's trading for $9. All right, so that's in the money, and this option expires on Friday. All right, so you can see that even the out-of-money options are very expensive. All right, we were playing the 535 today, and I was buying that at around $4. She closed at around 6 bucks. This, this, this option, which is 10 points out of the money, is still trading for $4, $4 and change, okay? So there's so much volatility now going on in Apple that these options are slowly being priced up. And that opens up to our new discussion of the minis, okay? Now the ICE is going to open up minis on, in March of next year, okay? You guys know what this shit means? This means that one contract, if you buy this, let's say this, let's say you buy this 540 call and you buy one contract, that represents 100 shares of the stock. When you buy the minis, one contract is going to represent 10 shares. All right. So what's that going to do is that on your options chain, you're going to see the same damn weeklies, and you're going to see two sets of weeklies: one that represents 100 shares, and another that represents 10 shares. And what that's going to do is it's going to decrease the amount or the price of those options because it's only representing 10 shares. And many of you guys are saying, holy shit, that's great. Now they're going to be cheaper. And I, you know, I have a small account. I got a thousand dollars. I got two G's. I got 10 grand. Now I can play uh, Apple options because they're a lot cheaper. But 
realize with the advent of all these new strategies, these new options, these new products, the market makers are the ones making the cash here, guys, okay? Most of these options expire absolutely worthless, and we are the suckers that are buying these things, hoping for them to go from $1 to $10. That's our game, all right? The market makers are the ones pocketing the cash because they're selling it to our dumbasses, all right? So that's the whole game right there, and now with the minis, they're going to have a lot more options, too, uh, to be able to game us, all right? So now what we want to do is take a look at uh, an actual trade and take a look at a chart of um, a chart of an Apple option that I played today. Okay. So now first thing, first things first, you need to decide what kind of trader you are. Okay. That's one of the most important things to decide. Are you a day trader? Are you a swing trader? Are you, you know, holding your positions for a couple of days? Are you just trying to scalp it in and out? Are you trying to write the options? You have to figure that out first before you are going to enter in any one of these Apple options, okay? So let's take a look at what happened today. Um, stock opens up at 524 and just chops up and down. When you see all of this kind of nonsense, you aren't going to make a freaking dime buying a, or going along a call or going along a put. And I'll show you a couple, I'll show you a couple things that I did. I bought this option at $4 this morning because I thought the stock was going to break out. I know probably a lot of you guys did it as well because you saw the, uh, the strength from yesterday and, uh, and you never got your move, right? Market was rallying, but Apple was doing absolutely nothing for most of the day, okay? This is the gaming aspect of Apple, okay? There's a lot of market makers. There's a lot of institutions. There's a lot of high-frequency trading firms just, just going nuts in this thing, holding the price of the stock down until 1130 out of nowhere where she, where she puts in a nice rally. Okay, the options trade very choppy while all this kind of nonsense is happening. So you get these 50 cent sweep ups and sweep downs and you really have to be on point with your execution. This means your speed with which you put in an order has to be on point. It takes me fractions of a second to put in an order on anything. So for me to queue up and buy something, I just put in how much I want to buy, 320, boom, hit enter and I'm in. For a lot of you guys, you're scrambling through these uh, brokerage platforms and trying to queue up your orders here. That's mistake number one because you're, you're wasting way too much time putting in your actual order. Okay? So that's step number one. Step number two here is, is playing small until you finally realize you do have a move. Okay? So notice how choppy and shitty this option was trading before 11.30, before it actually spiked up and made some clean moves. Okay? So you got to recognize this by watching how the option trades versus how the stock is trading. Okay? You also have to watch, obviously, what your market is doing. This right here is a chart of the broad indexes. Um, you know, as, you know, is the market trending up? Is the market positive? Are we pushing higher? If we're pushing higher, how come Apple is just sitting down? And, and why is Amazon going higher? You know, these are all kind of questions that you need to ask as you are trading this thing. But strictly with Apple weeklies, you need to be buying dips on your option, okay? That's one huge concept that most people cannot grasp, and even if it takes me a while to, because we all want to buy breakouts, all right? We all take a look at a stock that is that is hitting a, a upper resistance area, which in this case was 524, 525. In the morning, it just couldn't get over, and every single time it looked like it was going to get over, what are we doing? We're buying these calls. We're buying these out-of-the-money calls, expecting the break to happen, and expecting this move to happen right here. So what do we end up doing? We end up paying way too much for the option, and then we sell it right back to the market makers for what? 25% discount, 30% discount, 40% discount, and we get smoked, right? And then when the actual trade happens, we ain't nowhere to be found, okay? So in Apple, you have to buy the washouts on the premium, okay? The, the, either direction you're playing it, whether you're going for the puts or whether you're going for the calls, okay? So you have to wait, you have to wait, you have to be patient and try to scalp in with small size to figure out where that move is going to happen. Okay, that's one of the most important, important pieces. Um, when you do get that move, uh, you do have to be quick to bail on your premium. Okay, you really do have to be quick to bail on your premium because if you don't take it quick, Notice what happens to your option as the stock kind of consolidates, okay? So now I'm going to actually go through an a, a, a example of a trade that I made today, and I'm going to go through the tape on it for you guys just so you can see exactly uh, when I got in and when I actually got out of this thing. 
Uh, okay, so let's start at 11.30. So remember, I saw that breakout in the stock, and uh, the stock finally pushed over 5.25. It finally pushed over 5.25, and uh, it made a just quick shot to 5.26, okay? So now these are my trade confirmations for the day, and this was the trade that I made, uh, you know, to play this move here, all right? So now let's go back in the tape. Now this is a, this is a time in sales of the actual... Uh, uh, trades that took place in my Apple 535 weekly call. And I'll go through why I picked the 535, and then we'll go through several different ways you could have played it just to address, you know, whether you want to be swing trading, day trading, scalp trading, and all that kind of nonsense, okay? So the first trade here was at, uh, let's see, 1137, okay? So let's scroll down to 1137. Bear with me on this tape here. Not a lot of people get access to this, uh, and, it, and it does take a little bit to populate. Okay, so 11.37, I'm looking at this. Remember, the stock had already broken. Stock's already broken at 11.37. Let's take a look. Stock's already broken higher through 5.25. I'm looking at that as an indicator saying, okay, you know what? All this was bullshit. She's ready to make a move here. She popped over that 5.26, and now I'm going to get my move higher. Okay, so that's the basis for the trade. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and actually go through some of these trade confirmations. So at 11.37.46, uh, let's go down here. Let's find me on this tape. Okay, 11.37.46, this is me, this is me right here buying uh, uh, four bucks, okay? And uh, is that really me? Pete, you want to entertain them while I figure this out here? Yeah, I think it is you. Is that me? No. Because it's not. 11.37.46. No, because I got 4.80. No, oh, I got filled here 3.80. Okay, okay. So I'm buying 3.80 right here. These are my fills. This is where I entered my price in, and this is where I got and this is where I got filled. Okay. So this is me at 3.80 getting my first fills at 3.80. Okay. And then you can see me buying all the way up. So as we scroll down, let's look at 11.44.07 and 11.40.45. Let's keep looking here. Uh, I probably got to go another four minutes. Okay. All right. So let's look at 11.44. Okay. Again, these are all me. This is me getting filled four dollars, and then at four and a quarter here, this is at 11.45.31. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Now, what I want you guys to see, this is all me getting filled. These two add up to 25. This is me getting filled at four and a quarter. Okay. So when I feel I have a breakout, like that's when I'm go ahead. That's when I will go ahead and buy it. So this is all me buying all the way up. Now. Here's where I made the mistake. When, when you get the spike up in Apple, you have to take those profits very quickly because once she goes into consolidation, that's when your premium starts to downgrade and you start getting a, a second, you, you, you start asking yourself, you know, do I really still have this move? So I kept buying on the whole way down, okay? So you can see on this option, you can see the order started to go all the way up to about 460. Notice how we go out. We went up to about 445. I'm still buying. Okay. Now I'm still buying all the way up to 430. I sold a little bit here at 450. Um, so I'm still buying here. But my option went all the way up to about 460, 470. Okay. And the ideal way you want to play this is by scalping it. You know, you take that profit and then you kind of get back during the dips and then try to go for that second leg. The second leg was the most promising here. All right. So let's keep going here. Where did I sell out? I panicked. I panicked and sold out 410 at 12 o'clock. Okay, this is me still accumulating the option, a little bit over four dollars. So as this thing was going down, this is me still accumulating my option. When in reality, I should have taken all that profit up here and then gotten back for a second trade as this thing uh, uh, leveled out on the option. This is me getting scared and selling 50 contracts when this option hit a low. I know you guys often do this as well because you see your account up. X, Y, and Z dollars, and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you, and you're like, holy shit, you know, maybe I'll wait around to see if this thing gets back. This is how Apple trades. She'll make a huge spike up, and then she'll come right back down in price, giving you the same entry that you that you got in in the first place. Okay, so if you're buying four dollars, four thirty, you know, you get a huge spike up to four seventy. Apple is going to bring it back down to where you bought it, sometimes even lower before that second leg comes in. So you really really either have to have conviction on your move or you got to be flexible. You have to be flexible. So if I'm scalping, fuck it, let me take this profit up here and let me get in for a second trade as it's coming down. I chose not to do that, 
Um, and I had about, by the way, I had about 200 contracts up to this point, 230 contracts. I sold 50 at 410. And as you can see, this thing's still trading. Uh, this thing always clicks back. Hang on. All right. So as you can see, this thing is just fluctuating from 450 back down to 430. And now you're going to see it kind of keep going down uh, up here, 460. Let's keep going. Let's go to 12 o'clock here. Let's see what's up. Okay, so 12, 12 o'clock, uh, now it looks like the, now look at this. So now the option washes out. And again, this is the market maker's game. The market maker wants to make sure they wash out the options premium before they put in this move. So they want to get you guys to sell your options back to them at lower prices. They want to be able to write them to you at higher prices. And that's the game. So notice, as soon as it hits 410, and guys, by the way, this is all, this is me right here. This is me, 1203. This is me with this sweep, getting out at 410, okay? And then as soon as it hits 410, look, it, it, it prints a couple at four bucks. The seconds later, actually I should say minutes later, uh, it just rips right back up to 470 in, 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 in price. So let's keep going. Uh, let's go 1210 here. And, and then boom, there you go. So minutes later, I'm looking back up at 470. So I see I made the mistake of selling out at 50, and it was okay. I didn't buy any more back, and then my option went right back to where the highs were. I started selling from seven dollar, from 470 all the way up 530, 560, and all the way up to six dollars. Okay, so I sold all the way up on this whole move with about 180 contracts or so. Okay, so again. What do you take from this? You take the fact that Apple often has a lot of shakeouts, okay? So when you look at the actual chart here, I mean, look at what happened. She made that initial pop. Everybody on the street now is talking about, okay, let's go Apple long. Let's go Apple long. They need to shake people out first, okay? That's, this is how Apple moves, all right? This is how Apple moves. And notice what happens for your time decay, okay? Or, or I should say sentiment decay. Because this option went from four bucks to four seventy, back to four dollars. If you're playing something that's further out of the money, look what happens. Your option goes from a dollar fifty up to two and change, down to a buck seventy five. So this is big fluctuation in your price, and you're going to feel it when you look at your account P and L. All right. Now to have a quick discussion on what option to trade. I mean, how far out of the money should you go? I mean, uh, you know, Apple is trading at whatever. You know, she's trading at five twenty five. How far out of the money should I go? Well, that depends on your risk tolerance here, guys. I mean, if you're freaking, uh, you know, if you're pretty risk adverse and you don't like, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of stomach tolerance or tolerance for pain here, you should try to go closer to the money and pay a little bit more for your option, okay? But notice the percentage gains are going to be less on your move, okay? So if you're taking a look at this option, you know, you take a look at the span of it, $4 to about 6 bucks. you know, you got a 50% move right there. Whereas you take a 445, this is 10, this is 20 points out of the money when that move happened, and you get a move, you get almost double your money here. So you get a 100% move here versus 50% on a move in uh, in in the one that was closer to the money. Okay, so as you go further out, you get more percentage gains, but realize your risk is greater too because now look at the washout. So now look at the washout after uh, uh, the stock just rose all the way to 532. You see all this chop consolidation here. Look at what that did to the price of your option, okay? And look at what this last sweep did down here. They have to put this in to bury people on this option before they make the next move, all right? So they buried everyone in this thing, back to where we originally bought it on the original breakout, even though the stock is, what, two points higher than where we started buying it? Come on, guys. So, so this is the market makers playing their games. This is us panicking and saying, ah, shit, she's no longer a longo. So screw this. Let's throw in the towel, okay? So this is us overpricing an option, and this is us realizing, ah, shit, we might not have our move, so uh, let's bury the whole damn thing, okay? Market makers know this. This is the game that they play, all right? And when you're playing stuff that's way out of the money, notice your premium decay is a lot more, okay? There's a lot more than it is if you're closer to the money. So notice this one only, you know, went up to 6.5, came back down to 4 where we bought it. This one came back all the way to before the move happened, okay? Again, because it's further out of the money. So there's more risk entailed when you're playing uh, uh, further out of the money. Pete, did you want to add anything here? Guys, just to wrap this up and uh, bring it together here, we want to really address to you guys how market makers are gaming you in terms of how they're uh, stealing your money um, in the pennies and also in the stock itself. And you have to understand that market makers, 
and big funds and big institutions that are algorithmic have way more resources than you and way more understanding. And just to drop some real knowledge on you guys in terms of the technology behind this, if you guys don't know what a depth of market is, depth of market is pretty much your level two. All right, your level two has certain levels to it, and most of the time, traders are only paying attention to the top level, meaning what is the bid and what is the offer, okay? And that's how we trade. You know, we want to see, you know, what's, what's being printed on the tape and uh, how these levels are holding up. What you don't understand, though, is that there's much deeper, deeper levels to this, and this is what algorithmic trading is all about. Everybody in the background, the get-go's and the Credit Suisse's, they're actually looking at the full depth of market. We're talking about 20, 30, 40 levels deep, analyzing what the real supply and demand are within the stock, and they're gaming it. And they're gaming it through the equities, and they're gaming it through the options. And this is why it's so important, guys, that you have to pay attention to tape reading. And this is something that we teach in our classes, and something that we, the, the way that we trade is based on tape reading. You have to understand how these options are traded, how they're coming up on the time of sales, and how your equity is trading. Uh, we could talk about charts all day that look like breakouts and breakdowns and all that kind of stuff, but if you're playing the option, most likely you're going to get smoked in it if you don't have the right timing because the market makers are there to take advantage of all the dumb flow that comes in Absolutely. that don't understand the real supply and demand of a stock, yep. and they're going to go there, and they're going to write, and they're going to sell you all these options, Absolutely. and they're going to expire worthless on you, and you're going to lose money back and forth between the bid and the offer and all that kind of stuff. So not to, not to interrupt you, Pete, I know you're on a roll here, but to give you guys a perfect example of what he's saying is most dumb retail flow, a.k.a. us, everybody in this fucking webinar right now, okay, we look at these price level breakouts, right? And you guys are sitting there looking at your charts saying, oh, shit, this looks like a breakout, and, uh, and let's go ahead and get long. So what are you going to do? You're going to tell me you're going to pay two and a quarter or 250 for this thing, and then you're going to sit in this while it goes against you 50%, 50% or 60% or even 70% on your money, and you're going to stick in this and keep buying? No, no. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a bad way to look at these things. And this is what Apple is capable of doing to you if you aren't, if you aren't good or better with your timing and if you aren't waiting for certain things to kind of just add up uh, and give you the bigger picture, okay? So again, the market makers will do the fucking best job in the world to get you to pay way up for these options and then get you to pitch them right back to them for 50% off or 60% off, and then your move goes ahead and happens, okay? This is the gaming theory aspect of it, and this is what Pete's talking about. And guys, in general, what we're doing is that we, we run a little chat, and what we try to do is tell our traders, you know, what exactly we're looking at on the tape. All right. Now, again, it's very, very important about the timing within options. And what we're trying to do here is we're putting out the feeler trades. We're testing this out. You know, we operate here as a means for the community to understand this. What we just told you in terms of market making, you will not find this information anywhere else. I'm talking about information that Getco and Credit Suisse and these Black Rocks, they don't want you to understand this because they want to game you and take your money. They're in the spreads trying to take your money here. Now, again, guys, uh, Many of you might not understand what tape reading is, but you know this is something that you know what we're trying to spread. You know the knowledge around through Benzinga, through MarketFi, uh, and through our other affiliates is to really understand uh, you know tape reading. Uh, I think uh, I think Kyle, the CEO over at MarketFi, is actually running a special right now on our classes. I think he's going to do like a thousand bucks off or whatever it is for a January course. Um, we have a coupon code. It's uh, Apple A P P L E, not the actual ticker A P P L. And uh, I think there are only 12 spots left. And again, guys, you could go onto our website. You can look at our blog. You can check out our chat room. What we're really trying to do is create a movement here. You know, we want people to understand that options is where the new money is. All right, Absolutely. weekly options, mini options. They're only going to proliferate more and more and more. And what's really important is that you have to understand that the equities game is really, really crowded right now. It's going to be really hard for the average trader to get any type of edge in there because you don't have access to the routes, you don't have access to the algorithms. So what other way can you play? You gotta play through the actual um, the options. Okay, there's real money behind here. Today I think we made like forty thousand dollars. We're not we're not even that big. You know, we made like forty G's today playing options. Okay. A couple of our chat room members made like thirty thousand dollars last month. And this is no BS. We can tell you this, we can show you all the, the P and L's. It is no joke. Now again guys Feel free to stop by, you know, our store at sanglucci.marketfi.com. You know, we've got our classes there. You know, we've got a chat room there for your guys' use. You know, come check it out. 
you know, we're here as a resource for you. Feel free to check out our blog. You know, we really want to be able to, you know, create a movement. Again, guys, you know, we're here to act as a resource for you. All right, it's not just, you know, we're just trying to pitch some nonsense here. This is real money that many retail investors and many retail traders don't understand. Do not get smoked by the market makers. Again, guys, we've got 12 seats left going into our next course. Feel free to get a, hit us up. Uh, coupon code is APBLE. Um, go to our store, put it in there. You'll get a discount. You won't regret it. Try to start off the next year on the right foot, guys. I know this year has been really, really tough with the fiscal cliff, uh, with you know QE3 being announced, with all the crap going on in Europe. We want to help navigate, and we want to help steer you guys in the right direction. So just to uh, wrap it up, thank you guys for coming out. Really appreciate it. I know we've got a lot of questions, so we're going to try to address several of these questions. Yeah. And um, there was a lot. There was a lot. I did also want to uh, to to speak about on the Apple Weeklies and just just in trading in general. But we're going to have a lot more of these webinars, so don't worry about it. Um, but again, uh, let's take uh, let's take some questions here. Stephen Brown, I wouldn't take a class from you if my life depended on it. Nice, buddy. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, then. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do you guys use game theory? Um, we don't actually. So I know what you're asking. We don't actually uh, uh, have a formula, so to speak, about game theory. But we do understand how it's used uh, in in gaming the markets. All right. And uh, and again, options trading is all about game theory. Okay. Let's put it this way. Right now, the money the money that is being made. Okay. The bulk of the money that is being made is in the hands of the writers. Okay. It's not us morons that are sitting here going along these options, trying to buy something for a dollar and sell it at two. Okay, that works. Yes, it does work. But the majority of the time, who's making the money here? Okay, it's the writers of the of these options. Okay, it's the people betting against us. All right, those are the ones that are making uh, 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 the cash. All right. Uh, in terms of uh, addressing the game theory behind Susquehanna and Andres, Susquehanna runs the game theory on like microseconds. So what you have to understand is that when they're bidding, they're also on the sell side. And we also do that too, depending on which options we're in. We'll sit on the bid just to try to, you know, give the impression that we're trying to go long certain XYZ amount of contracts, so on and so forth. It's really important that you do implement those, but if you don't have the account size, it's right. very, very difficult to actually implement those, right. those types of right. strategies. You have to go in more illiquid stocks. Right. To actually use it more properly. Right. Apple is not the place to do it. And Brian, that answers your question right there. If you want to write options and you want to do it well and you want to do it correctly, you need a huge uh, capital account, guys. You need a huge capital pace to play it, all right? Because your broker wants to make sure you got the leverage and you got the cash to satisfy any of the, uh, you know, if you get put to stock and all that kind of stuff, all right? So you need to have the cash account. For those of you who will want to understand tape reading or learn tape reading, okay, you got two options. Uh, uh, one of them is take our class, and number two, and number two is to sit and watch a level two in a time in sales on one stock for a good two weeks. Now the problem is you're not really going to know what to look for, but hopefully through that watching, and this is how I did it, and this is how I learned it, just sitting there and just kind of watching the matrix over and over again for hours a day. All right, there's there's a reason why there's no books on the street about this. There's no there's not one book on the street that I found about any tape reading whatsoever. All right. And, uh, and again, they call it a lost art, they call it a dead uh, science, uh, but that's bullshit. Because to me, everything happens on the tape first. Their institutions have footprints, all right? If they, if they want to come in and buy a half a million shares, they got a way of doing it. They have a way of selling a half a million shares, all right? And, and again, through our class, we show several examples of what to look for, all right? So let's take a couple more questions here. Curtis is asking, do you hold any weeklies on Apple overnight? Only in certain circumstances. Okay, so yesterday, yesterday, uh, uh, you know, through the close, you saw, you know, you saw it was pretty strong into the close. That would be an example where uh, I, I would probably hold overnight. And again, you're looking at the indexes too. So if you looked at the indexes uh, uh, overnight, uh, you know, chances are you kind of, you kind of had a feeling that we were going to get a gap up. So if you have those two things going along together, um, you know, yes, maybe I would hold an overnight. But generally speaking, you do not want to hold these weeklies overnight. Okay because you're going to lose number one on time decay and then if your stock doesn't gap you're still going to freaking lose on sentiment and all that kind of stuff all right so try try not to especially if you're a newbie freaking trader definitely do not um we've got a couple questions uh yeah, we've got 50k go. account one to five contracts max a lot of times it's uh excuse me mike a lot of times it's going to be really um it really depends on your style of trading and also your timing if you have the wrong timing it's going to be very very tough to, uh, to, to be able to go more contracts than that. 
Um, in general, I would say, you know, if you're comfortable with one to five, get better at trading one to five before you up it. You know, whenever you up the size, it's when the emotions kick in. Right. That's when you got to be careful there. Dave is asking a great question here. It looks like I still bought the technical breakout on the Apple. So where does tape come into it? Dave, that's a great question. So tape comes into it to save you from your own stupidity, which we often do a lot of, okay? So tape is there to confirm a breakout to see if it's actually for real. Because although this breakout looked great and it was actually the real one, there was about six or seven other times that you might have bought this call the same at the same price right over here, okay? So the tape allows you to look further into what the move looks like, okay? And prevents you from, from uh, you know, getting too heavy too early, which is a lot, which is a thing that a lot of people do, all right? So Andres is asking, saying, do I just buy calls and puts? Uh, generally speaking, yes, but however, we freaking write a shit ton as well, and we want to get more heavier into that. Uh, again, that's a good way on Thursdays and Fridays to capitalize on time decay and, um, you know, if you have a stock that's doing nothing. So, for example, if you guys took a look at Priceline last Friday, uh, that was right here, I think. Stock did absolutely nothing. And you can sit here and write both sides of the trades. You know, the 625 calls, 620 calls. You can write the 600 puts. You can write the 605 puts. This thing's doing absolutely nothing. And all those options expired at zero. And you would have been able to get them for a good 75 cents in premium, dollar in premium. That's the money. That's the money right there. Thursdays and Fridays when you're starting to write options. All right, a lot, of, a lot of hedge funds now are starting to do that. Uh, in general, guys, we watch the SPIs just because they have, uh, they, they're relatively the best indicators for us. Our watch list in general is, uh, is, is all SPY oriented. Um, these are, uh, they, that's pretty much basically, you want to put that link over this right here? Which one? This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that over here. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple other questions here. Uh, no, there's no specific reason why we use Active Trader Pro here. This is just uh, for teaching purposes only. You know, we're, we're trying to show you exactly what is going on and the charts just happen to be right. nice looking on here. We use a proprietary platform that not many people can get a hold of. Yeah, if you guys stuff. have any questions about platforms or recommendations for brokers, shoot us an email. That's going to be uh, Lucci at sanglucci.com. Shoot us an email there. Uh, Tom, to make $40,000 overnight, you don't necessarily have to put in that much money. Yeah, I mean, we're we talking had, about options that... Yeah, we didn't have that much risk, man. We had about twenty, thirty thousand 30000 overnight that we made 20000 off of. So we had the banks long, we had JPM long, or you know, and then we had Goldman Sachs long. Uh, so you don't need that much if you're in the right options, okay? If you're in the right options. Now, all these questions are not really pertain to Apple. So, so again, let's 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 bring it back to uh, let's let's bring it back to the, uh, the you know the topic of the webinar. And again, we're going to do a lot of these free webinars too. So we'll do a whole one on writing. We'll do a whole one on selling of spreads, credit spreads, and all that kind of shit. Uh, and and that's you know that's that's going to be very useful stuff to a lot of you as well. All right. Uh, how can you tell if the stock is going to gap? Uh, dude, that's a uh, that's the fortune that's, teller. Question. That's uh, you know I'll call Miss Cleo, bro. Call Miss Cleo. You remember Miss Cleo? Yeah, call her. Um, uh, let's Martin, see. we don't we don't we actually don't hold overnight at all that often, really. I would say under ten percent we hold overnight. There's a lot of moves during the day. Right. If you pick the right strike prices and you have the right timing, right. you can put on a twenty thousand dollar position and make twenty thousand dollars off of it. Yeah. We just showed you options that doubled and tripled in value. Yeah, we smoked this Bank of America overnight, and and Marklin, I mean, there's only certain situations where everything just kind of comes together to give you your overnight, okay? So if things are looking very suspect all across the board, you know, generally speaking, you don't want to hold these overnights, especially if we're in consolidation. If we're in consolidation, you're going to get smoked overnight. That's not what you want to be doing. If you're looking at the indexes and we look strong coming into the close and, you know, you, you're, you feel pretty confident that tomorrow we're not going to get any crazy economic data that's going to screw your trade up, then, yeah, you know, take a risk overnight, especially, you know, in these banks. These banks were great to pay out overnight, all right? Uh, how many stocks do I have in my watch list? This is my watch list right here. This is it, bro. This is like 15 or 20 stocks, and I only trade like five or six of these, all right? Uh, do you find opportunities year-round, or is this the period? Dave, there's opportunities every day, bro. Uh, Let's not get to all these questions. Guys, if you want to get in touch with us, we're on Twitter, Sanglucci Trades. Yep. Uh, feel free to email us, lucci at sanglucci.com. Feel free to check out the, uh, the link that we've posted in the chat section here. If you want any information in terms of our classes, uh, you could also reach us on Facebook, Sanglucci Trades, uh, sanglucci.com. Guys, 
you know, we're going to wrap it up here. This is pretty much the end. We're getting a lot of questions in here. So we're going to try to kind of sift through the major questions and throw on the next uh, webinar to, uh, to, to go over all this stuff. So again, guys, feel free to email us. Check us out on Twitter. Check it out. Check us out on our website. We're also connected through Marketfly and Benzinga. Uh, again, guys, appreciate you guys coming out. Apologies to all of you we couldn't get to. I know, you know, we, we do have hundreds of people in here. So, again, we're going to get to another free webinar, you know, with spreads and all that kind of other stuff. If you have any questions, you guys have our email, freaking uh, hit us up on the email. All right? Hit us up on the email, lucci at sanglucci.com. You guys have all the resources for the, uh, for the webinar or for the, uh, you know, the class if you guys wanted to take it. Uh, and then remember, we are recording this. So this recording will be up on our website. It will also be up on Marketfly, Benzinga, and all that nonsense. All right? Enjoy your evening, guys. Thanks. Thank Thanks you very attending. much for attending. We'll talk soon.